Welcome back, everybody. First of all, I want to apologize for what is probably a very loud laptop in the background. It is very unhappy at the moment for some reason. Uh, hopefully, it's not too distracting. Now, in this video, I want to talk about functional programming abstractions and whether they are a bit too much of a barrier to entry into functional programming or if the benefits outweigh drawbacks. So, when I say abstractions, I'm talking about things like map, filter, reduce, zip, unzip, head, tail, the common abstractions that you'll use as your basic helper functions, things you would get in if you're using JavaScript from something like underscore or um, lodash, I think is the big one right now, those sorts of libraries. I'll be using Haskell in this video just because it makes a bit more sense. Uh, and the big debate here is whether or not these abstractions, learning these abstractions, provide, creates too much of a barrier to entry into functional programming or if the benefits outweigh the drawbacks. So starting off, I have this list of pairs of first names and last names, and I want to just get the first names. Now, if I use one of these abstractions, I could do something like first names equals, oops, nah, that'd be great. Uh, first, <laughs> map first over names. Put a space just because it looks nicer. And then if I save and compile this, then what this is going to do is give me all of the first names in this list of pairs. Currently there's only two, so it's not super exciting, but that's what fits on the screen when you jack up your font so that it's hopefully at least somewhat mobile friendly. Uh, Hopefully this doesn't take too long to compile. Holy smokes, laptop is not happy. All right, and let's run this. And there we go, we get the first two names. So the real question, given line three, is this use of abstractions making this code less approachable? So the argument that I've gotten a few times from other people is that I have to understand map and I have to understand FST, which I'll just call first before I can understand these lines of code. And I would say that is true. Absolutely, you have to understand what map is, you have to understand what first does. But if you understand map and first, you understand everything about this line of code without ever seeing names, which is pretty cool. And that's going to apply to any language that implements map, fmap, some variation of it, because these tell you the data types and they tell you what the operations are actually doing. So you have something like map. It is going to purely apply ev to every value in a functor. And if you don't know what functors are, check out my first video in the Monad mini series. I'll link it down below and throw a card up in the corner. It'll teach you all about functors. But map will apply a function to every value in a functor. If we look at first, first is an abstraction that gives us the first value in a tuple and so we know from using this that we are getting a list of tuples and we are iterating or mapping over them uh, to get the first value. So it tells us everything about names without ever seeing names. We learn everything at the call site and it's very expressive. It's very clear what we're intending to do. Uh, some other languages implement things like each uh, so this would not have a return value, and we would do something like each or for each, and that would actually modify the values in place and would signal a different intention. But here, obviously, we want to use map. Uh, now, there's another way we could do that. We could use a different abstraction. We could do first names equals uh, first, and we f before we do that, we need to unzip the names, not numbies, names. So what this is going to do is take unzip takes a, in this case, a list of pairs and creates a pair of lists. And if we unzip the list up here, then we are going to end up with two lists in a pair of first, the one list is going to be first names, the other list is, the second is going to be last names. And since we want the first names, we can just grab the first. So let me make sure I did that correctly as well. Apparently this is going to take a while to compile while I'm also recording. Oh, that was a lot faster. Excellent. And there we go. We still get the same answer. And this, again, indicates things about the data that we're operating on 
without having to look at the data. But you have to also understand unzip. However, unzip, map, first, these are going to be things that if they're implementing in a functional programming language, that is going to be indicating the intention and behavior of the code regardless of the syntax of the language. If you see something like map first names or in another language you see something like uh, names dot map um, and then it would be something like name and what would that be? I guess name dot first. If we were going full Ruby. And this still, because we can see what map does, or we already know what map does, we know that we are purely mapping over a functor, or <laughs> I, I only use iteration, but iterating over a functor and returning the first value. So it is not language specific. It is a generalized concept that can be applied to any functional programming uh, language. So let's use a a simpler example just based on mapping over a list of numbers and what it might look like if we chose to implement the, the logic without using map, so without using the abstraction that I would recommend. So we'll get rid of all this and we could create a value called nums, we'll just be going to 10 as usual and then we could go new nums and we will just map over nums with plus one and that will give us a list of new nums which will just be nums incremented by one and so again if we wanted to understand this code we have to understand what map is doing. But if we understand what map is doing, we understand what this code is. We can also tell the data type that nums holds, even if this was called something less specific. It wasn't called nums, it was just called blah. We know that we have a curried function with a plus and a data type of integer, which means that we can likely infer, because we know the behavior of map, that this curried function is going to be expecting a second integer. So we can infer that this is a functor of integers, which is pretty neat. But what if we wanted to implement this without using map? And we were going to do something <laughs> very, very specific, and we'll generalize it after. We could do something like ink nums in a list. And first, it could, the base case, because we, if we're going to do some sort of looping, we'll be using recursion. Base case is an empty list, and it just returns an empty list. Otherwise, we can get the first value and then the rest of the list. And we would want to increment the first value. We will define ink in a second. And then ink nums in a list with the rest of the list. So now we just have to define ink, which will just be our curried plus operator with one. And now we can do new nums equals ink nums in a list nums. We'll compile this and then run her again. Make sure we get the same answer. And looks like we get the same answer to me. So my, my point here, the stance that I take, is that it is going to be less mental overhead to learn map once than it is to come to every new language and figure out how the language works, what looping mechanism it uses, and figure out what is going on in some instance where you otherwise would be mapping. So consider ink nums in a list. You have to understand that this is a recursive function. You have to understand pattern matching. You have to understand this destructuring of sorts where you split the first value and then the rest of the list. And you have to understand the cons operator. You have to understand all these things versus 
if you are a new map, and remember it just looked like new nums equals map plus one or ink nums. You under, if you understand map, you understand all of this code. Now, what if we wanted to implement an entirely uh, an entire version of map specifically for lists, and that was going to be our generic version of ink nums in a list? So we could do something like transform list, and this is going to take a function, empty list, oops, and it will just return an empty list for the base case. Otherwise, transform list f is going to be strikingly similar to ink nums and list with a slight difference. We'll apply f to x, and then cons transform list with f of the rest of the list. Now we can go back here and do transform. Ooh. Transform list, pass in ink, and pass in nums. So someone who prefers not to have abstractions could say, all right, well now I know that we are transforming a list. So we understand that nums is a list, and we are incrementing it. So we can look at increment and see that it deals with numbers, so I can understand the code by looking at where these are defined. But these are really just more specific abstractions over a... <laughs> over the more general abstraction of map. So let me just run this again, make sure I'm not showing you something that does not work. And so at the end of this video, I'm going to ask that you leave some comments down below. Let me know if I'm totally off my rocker with this, or if you agree that these abstractions provide more benefit for communicating cross-language and regardless of syntax than they provide as a barrier to, than drawback of being a barrier to entry for functional programming. Uh, it seems like functional programming is sort of in the zeitgeist right now. It's much more popular than it was at a time. And these things like map, filter, reduce, they definitely show up in more languages. Even lambdas, just in general, show up in more languages than they used to. But these abstractions do come with a bit of a learning curve. I think that this learning curve is worth it, and you have to learn something anyway. You're either going to learn the syntax and how a language works, or you learn these abstractions, and at least you can, at a glance, infer most likely what the code is doing, and it'll actually tell you a lot about the data, a lot about the language, and a lot about what the code intends to do. So it's more, it communicates more clearly regardless of syntax. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.